Walt Disney was known to be a ruthless film editor. He felt that if something in the filming got in the way of the flow, it should be cut out. Even if the scene itself was brilliant or funny or beautiful, if it didn't help the story to flow, it should be cut out. Good writers tell us that to produce a good piece of literature, you have to edit and edit and edit. That the effective pieces of writing are effective largely because of what was cut out. Only the best remains. And if we think of our lives as a story, what needs to be edited in your life? What needs to be rewritten at this point? What needs to be deleted right now so that the story of your life can flow as God intends? In the gospel that we just listened to, Jesus uses some very graphic illustrations to make that point. He's using something called hyperbole, an exaggeration, in order to draw a lesson so that we can't miss it. He says, if your hands cause you to sin, cut your hand off. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye is the means of your sin, pluck it out. Better to live in this life, he says, with one hand or one foot or one eye than to go to the fires of Gehenna, the fires of hell, with all of your members intact. We get the point. What in our lives needs to be cut out so that the story of our life can flow? Sometimes the difference between a mess and a masterpiece lies in what was eliminated. And the first place we would look for editing is the sin in our lives. It doesn't belong there. It gets in the way. And sometimes a sin that becomes a habit can be like an old friend. It becomes a part of us. There's an old rhyme that goes, knock, knock. Who's there, I said. A little lonely sin. Enter, I said, and then all hell broke in. People who appear to be very fine people, very decent people, sometimes will tell you that there was an indiscretion that they gave in to years ago that has had a profound effect on them ever since. It seemed at the time to be no big deal, but it has affected them ever since. Sin can do that. We talk about the seven capital sins, or they're also called the seven deadly sins. The reason for these names are that they are sin, but what makes them deadly is that they enable other sins to follow. And they are, the seven of them, pride, which is the chief one, covetousness or greed, lust, anger, gluttony or intemperance, envy, 
and sloth or laziness. These sins enable other sins, and they can take root. And with God's grace, we need to cut them out. We need to edit them out. We need to eliminate them. And we have to have a plan in order to do that. There was a woman on an airplane years ago when airline food used to be a few notches better than it is today. In fact, is it a dinner actually existed? She got her dinner and she immediately took the salt and the pepper and covered the piece of chocolate cake that was there for dessert. And the flight attendant said, oh, what are you doing? That's not necessary. And the woman said, oh, yes, it is. Otherwise, I might eat it. We have to have a plan for eliminating the sin in our lives, cooperating with the grace of God. It doesn't all just happen by itself now, does it? To edit out the sin, to cut it out. Secondly, our relationships in life sometimes need some editing, some reworking. We need to go back regularly and look at our priorities and be sure that we're living according to those priorities. There was a wife who was married to a husband who was involved in everything. In fact, she felt he was way too active. In fact, she wished he'd stay home once in a while to be with her and to be with the children. And one day she got exasperated and threatened that on his tombstone she was going to have this motto written, he never missed a meeting. What would people who love you tell you about the schedule that you keep? Do they want more of your time, more of your attention? If they had control of your personal calendar and a pair of scissors, what would they snip out? Because they want you around. They value your presence. There was a poster that had a rowboat out on a small lake on a beautiful early morning, and in that rowboat was a father and a son, and they were both fishing. It was a very calm moment, and the caption to the poster was, Take Time. When we look at editing the story of our lives, what needs some attention in your own life with the use of your time with people who love you? And the third area that needs some tending is our relationship with God. What place do I give God in my life? Well, you might say, I'm here at Mass right now <laughs> on this Sunday morning, and I'm glad you are, and I commend you for that. But what about the other six days? What place do you formally give to God in your life? If you look at your daily calendar, what is a part of your daily life for prayer, alone, with your family, here in community. I'm afraid sometimes that if we gave our human friendships the time each week that we give to God, our human friendships wouldn't survive. God has offered us a relationship with himself. How do I respond to that relationship with the use of the time that God has given me? The gospel today sounds pretty harsh, cutting off things, 
but the point is well made. Jesus wants the story of our life to move from beginning to end as he wills. What in our lives needs some rewrite, some editing, some cutting out in terms of sin, in terms of our relationships with one another and with God? When we allow God to be our editor in chief. God can turn our lives from being a mess to being a masterpiece.